So on the surface, the data that I just gave also suggests that NEET PG 2023 was in fact tougher than NEET PG 2022. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Nikhil and I'm a doctor and I've done my MBBS from uh, HBTMC and Dr. Arun Kapoor Hospital in Mumbai. So in this video, I'm going to talk about my thoughts about the recently held NEET PG 2023. So the NEET PG 2023 exam was held on the 5th of March and the result was announced just a few days back on 14th of March. NB was very quick to announce the result the last year as well. The last year also the result was announced, I think in around, you know, nine days or something. All right, so I had appeared for NEET 2022 as well. And in that exam, I had gotten a rank of 23,260 out of, I think around 1.8 lakh candidates who had appeared at that time. This time though, I got a rank of 2011 out of 2 lakh candidates. So yeah, I think it was a pretty good jump for me. It was a really long and tedious journey and finally it is now over. So well, let us talk about the question which everyone asked that is what was the difficulty level? So according to me, this exam was somewhere on the moderate to tough side. Uh, definitely from the last time it was uh, difficult. And I think uh, the data would also prove the same thing as I'm going to show shortly. Besides this, many people found time management very difficult in this exam. Uh, so most of the people and most of my friends actually were uh, not able to complete the exam like half an hour before or, uh, you know, 40 minutes before. They were just going cut to cut, you know, like they were going till the very end and uh, many, like some of my friends could also not review the questions that they did. Besides, there were also a bunch of controversial questions uh, based on what me and my friends discussed and what we could recall. And one more thing which, you know, everyone must have observed in this exam, those who gave it, is there were many, many questions on HIV, alcoholism, STDs and vitamins. After the paper, I could not even remember any other question other than these. In fact, there was also a meme circulating all around the medical community about uh, this particular question pattern. So speaking about question pattern, what was the pattern of question in this exam? So uh, recently, NEET has been switching to more of clinical oriented questions rather than one-liners. And uh, this was pretty evident in this uh, exam as well. According to what I could make out and based on the opinions of my friends also, uh, many questions were actually long stem, around 40 to 50% questions were long stem questions where they give you a long clinical scenario and you have to answer on the basis of that. Around 30 to 40% questions were image based. Now speaking about one-liners, um, there were a few one-liners, actually uh, I cannot remember any of them but I think there were a few one-liners as well. I also think that the pattern of questions is likely to remain on the clinical oriented side in the future as well. Let's talk about the cutoff. So actually, uh, considering that the exam was tough, uh, I was expecting the cutoff to decrease. But what uh, NB has come out with uh, suggests that the cutoff has actually increased. In NEET 2022, the cutoff was something like this. And in NEET 2023, the cutoff is this. Now, one more thing I want to talk about is uh, the rank fluctuation and uh, how many people are there on my score. So I got an AIR of 2011 and my score was 607. So at my score, there are around 50 candidates and the ranks range from 1,975 to 2,026. So at my score, that is a score of 607. If you had this score in NEET PG 2022, you would get a rank of around 900 to 1,000. Let's talk about one more perspective. Let us talk about how many marks you would have needed in NEET 2022 to get a rank of 2011. So I looked it up and I found that uh, a rank of 2011 was at a score of around 580. So basically, in order to get this rank, you needed a slightly lesser score to get the same rank as I have this time. In NEET PG 2022, my score was 448 and the rank was 23,260. At that same score in NEET PG 2023, the rank is around 33,000. So on the surface, the data that I just gave also suggests that NEET PG 2023 was in fact tougher than NEET PG 2022. Now let us talk further about what helped me improve my rank. So the first thing, and many of you actually I think may be having a doubt about this, is PYQs. Were a lot of questions asked from PYQs? And the answer is yes. PYQs ended up helping a lot this time. Around 50 to 60% questions were from PYQs uh, according to my estimate and according to what estimates other people have made. So yeah, if you did your PYQs, then you would definitely have gotten an edge in this exam. One more thing that helped me, I think, was to keep my resources limited and to decide a plan beforehand itself. So often I've seen what many people end up doing is they run behind a lots of resources. Oh, I need to get these notes from Telegram. Oh, I haven't done these notes. Oh, I haven't done this test. I think more sources does not really mean more success. What I did was I decided what sources I'm going to follow beforehand itself. I made a plan and I decided to stick to that plan. I did not change my plan. I followed one plan consistently and I did not add a lot of uh, things and a lot of material into my study even later during the preparation. 
before studying itself decide what sources you are going to follow decide what is going to be your plan what is going to be your strategy and follow that all throughout one more thing that helped me was to create a short revision resource for the last few days of the exam now there are various different versions available for this you can make a separate notebook for grand tests in which you write all of your mistakes from your grand tests you can make what many people call as a 20th notebook in which you put all the key information and your uh, grand test wrong questions and uh, all the volatile stuff so to be honest i was actually a little skeptical when i first heard the concept of the 20th notebook i was not very willing to make one and i was like okay i would just revise my notes and you know i'll be able to do it i'll be able to revise all of my notes quickly because i have read them but you no know, that really does not work out very well so a few months back i also decided to make a 20th notebook and then i consistently made it and in the end it did turn out helping me a lot see what happens is whenever i get a grand test question wrong i put it in the 20th notebook and now i have a resource which has all of my weak points in it then i also used to read this 20th notebook uh, i used to try to read this 20th notebook before every grand test that i gave and actually over time i did observe an improvement in my grand test results and one more thing that helped me was consistency so i did not study for you know 10 to 12 hours a day or something i think i used to study for uh, you know in initially i used to study for around 6 hours 6 to 7 hours and right before the exam that had gotten up to you know 8 or 9 hours i never really studied for 10 to 12 hours but i think that uh, you know more hours does not mean a greater success now let's talk about what are the mistakes that i made last time or what things did i did not do last year that helped me this time first thing i'll say is i did not focus much on pyqs the last year so i'll tell you an interesting story about how helpful pyqs can be so last year i was just doing my study from the notes that i made and questions and tests but one day before the exam, I saw a video about your PYQs from biochemistry. And guess what? Three questions came from that video. Three questions. And those three questions were something which I would definitely not have been able to answer had I not watched those videos. So after the exam, I was left in shock. Ki, wow, that is amazing. And that is when I realized that doing PYQs is important. Another mistake that I did was I did not really make a concrete plan beforehand and I did not decide my resources properly. So I was just turning around with the go and if a new resource comes no, I would study that as well. And if somebody had told me, ki, oh, I'm reading this, I used to check that out as well. That's not really a very good idea, especially a few days before the exam. One more thing that I did or rather let's like, say did not do was I did not keep my distractions at bay. I'm going to be honest, I think I used to waste a good deal of time when I was preparing for NEET PG 2022. The time that if I would have utilized for studies, I may have saved up one year for myself. Now, one more feeling that many people get is uh, people get overwhelmed looking at the number of aspirants that are appearing. I had a friend who told me that when she got to the center, she saw all of these many aspirants and then she got really scared. She was like, oh, there are so many people giving the exam. Any of them can get ranked. So many of them might be better than me. And the answer to this question is, I think, do not compare yourself to others. Compare yourself to your previous self. That applies to even grand tests. In every grand test, do not aim to score better than my friend. Ki, oh, my friend scored this, this much. I'm going to score better than him now. No, do not focus on that. Focus on scoring better than what you did last time. Do not think about how much others are scoring. You have a certain preparation strategy. You are in a certain position. Others may be in a better position or in a worse position than you. You cannot compare yourself to others while you are in different positions. So you, your yardstick of comparison should be your own past self. In fact, there's a mention of the same thing in the book, The Personal MBA by Josh Kaufman. And it is something called the comparison fallacy. It simply says that other people are not you and you are not other people. Also, as Hugh MacLeod, cartoonist and author of Ignore Everybody Says, never compare your inside with someone's outside. One more thing that I would like to add to this based on my own personal experience is the importance of proper sleep proper diet and a little bit of exercise every day. See, this is a tough period. We have to study a lot. We have to study for long hours. But that does not mean that you compromise on your health. Because I believe that if you are healthy, if you are fit, if you are active, only then can your mind also be active and function at its best. So finally, let's talk about what about the future? What about the need from next year? Or rather, next. So yeah, this next thing has been going on for quite a while now. And it is likely that from the next year, NEET will be replaced by this new exam called as NEXT. So I think that NEXT is something that is going to be more clinically oriented, just like they have done NEET right now. I think in NEET also they have sort of phased in from one-liners to clinical questions. Like they gradually reduce the number of one-liners and gradually increase the number of clinical questions. Now many people are also saying that NEXT is going to be like the USMLE of India. Maybe. From the pattern that they have proposed, it does seem like that. They have proposed that the exam is going to be conducted in, you know, steps. So yeah, that way it is similar to USMLE. 
but whatever it is the exam is definitely going to be more clinically oriented so that's it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it and i hope it helped you all if you made it this far thank you so much for watching the video if you're interested in more content like this about medical life tips and medical exams then hit the subscribe button also do like and share this video i'll see you in the next one bye bye